So you're this VFW. Yeah. VFW, VFW. You were in the Marine Corps? Yes. No, I mean, good. Okay. Same flow. Let me, let me just adjust this a little bit. Are we live? No, it's live. On, it's just recording on my, on my phone. <laughs> and I'm proud to be an American. <laughs> the American flag is right behind you. You can't even see it. <laughs> but you can feel it. You can. <laughs> it's old glory right there, dude. I tell you. That's right. Okay? That's right. Y'all are going to understand today. That's right. Y'all going to learn today. That's right. Okay. So here's the uh, Thank you, sir. I just it right okay, here. Okay, just Let me know when we're ready. All right. Yep. All right. All right. Three, two, one. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another one of your A2B podcast episodes. I am Oliver Ramos. I am your host, and I'm always joined by my co-host, Barry Bull. What's up, Barry? How you doing? I feel like one million dollars. If you see my 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 um, introduction was different, you know why? Why? Because people already know that we are your number one source for military entrepreneurship and entertainment, and we don't have to keep reminding them. Gosh, that. Dang it, he is so every single crazy. time. He is he is handsome. He's yeah. hot. He's caliente. <laughs> hey, I'm trying. You know, I'm trying. Uh, I told yeah. you we got to speak offline about that uh t the TRT stuff. Yes. Uh, I think I'm about to uh, uh get ready to jump on that wagon. If you're a man and you're having the symptoms and you don't feel right, it's your job to take action. That's all I'm gonna say. Yeah. So uh, so we're definitely gonna be talking about more about that. I highly suggest that you guys reach out to uh, to Barry about that. But today, guys, like always, like all of our episodes, we have a very intriguing podcast because we're bringing today a representative from the VFW, which stands for Veterans of Foreign Wars. And we're here with Joy Mc... Mc how is it? Joy McAvoy. You got it. See, <laughs> uh, uh, it's the Hispanic... And it was a, I gave him a hard time because I said if it was a Spanish name, you're good, but it was Irish. Right. Yeah, so is that Irish? Yes. Okay, cool. Yes. Cool. Yes. Joey, welcome to the podcast, Thank brother. How you doing? Thank you so much. Yes, Appreciate sir. It. Yeah, of course. First off, I just want to say you guys are like celebrities to me, man. Get <laughs> out of here. I feel like, just me sitting here, I feel like I've made it. Okay. I feel like I'm finally <laughs> famous. Okay. I'm happy to be here, man. This is freaking awesome. I love this podcast, man. Thank I you. really, really do. It's Thank awesome. you, man. I appreciate it. I love that. The, you, guys got, you guys got it, man. You guys got like that X Factor. It was hey we you know Albert invited me on one time a few years back and here we are yeah. here we are we just keep and we just keep coming we just keep coming we, we just keep, keep showing up on Tuesdays <laughs> it's like yeah. you know? it's, it is yeah. like that man I, I definitely appreciate it I, I do want to ask you because obviously you you've been a, a fan of the podcast yeah, and now sure, you're here sure sure well, yeah. what what drove you to come on the podcast but what was really to everyone that's actually looking out there like do we do we have we known each other? Because a lot of people are like, well, he just brings his friends or he brings people, yeah. you know, it's like. We never met in person until a couple hours ago in the parking lot. Either, either you guys, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Why this podcast, though, brother? You can throw a rock and hit 50 podcasts. Yeah, what do you exactly. like about this one? You guys, to me, represent, like, the epitome of veteran success, you know. You guys, you guys did your thing in the military. You went all the way with it, you know, and it's almost like two ends of the spectrum, you know, at the drill field, the recruiting duty, you know, and then you guys got the dynamic sitting down with guests. I just think it's, it's something to see, man. It's something to listen to. That makes me feel good. Dude. Yeah. It, 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 it makes me feel good, bro. No, I'm serious. That, really, that was like, did you feel that? Yeah, I did. I did. I, Seriously. We had, we had a bromance. We had a thing right there. <laughs> <laughs> we had a thing right there. Yeah, there was a thing. There was something. I appreciate, I appreciate, I appreciate that. that a lot. Yeah, I appreciate that. Because there was something there. Some, man. You we guys, don't get that feedback all yeah, the time. Don't. We don't. Now, you guys yeah. really put yourself out there, you know, and that's, it takes something to do that. Yeah, usually you know, really the feedback that we receive is, is like negative feedback uh, of people assuming what we're trying to do instead of really looking into what we're really trying to do, man. So I really appreciate it. Yeah. Um, I really appreciate connecting with you, man. Um, Barry, it was a great idea to do the um, uh, the link, the Calendly link, because literally that's literally how we did. He went to the to the link, and then he here he is. Yeah, you know. So if you guys are looking, go to the link in my bio. Click on that link. Don't think that just because you go on that link, though, you're automatically going to come onto the podcast, okay? 
there is, there are conversations that happen prior to to ensure that you are the right guest for the podcast. Okay, so ensure that you guys understand that. But Joey, let's get let's get back to you, right? That's Obviously, right, you yeah. are a Marine Corps veteran. You That's did right. four years, in five, the, five years total, five, five years total, total in the United States Marine Corps. What, from what year to what year? January of five to January of nine, and then. 2013 to 2014, I did one year. Mm-hmm. So then I, I was active reserve. Active yeah, reserve. So I yes. So I discharged twice. Got so it. I, so I yeah. So I had broke. What they call it broken serve, broken time. Yeah. Broken time. Yeah. So okay. Yeah. So how old were you when you joined it initially? I was 18. Okay. So you just as Barry started? as Barry would say, I was born in the year 1986. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> That's so a bad good. year because the Redskins are Super Bowl champs. Oh my God! Here you go with his random ass facts. <laughs> that's a bad. Well, I'm just saying. And if you look at Doug Williams, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, that's one way to look at it. I'm sorry. That's one way to look at it. Yeah. Okay. That's so, at it. so you joined in uh, in 2005 as soon as you were 18. Yes, I did. Um, how did. was how was that experience back then? Because shit was really popping off in 05. It's a different time. It's a different era. Um, it was January 05. So I had a semester at community college. And uh, so I was contract PFC. I was Paris Island. I know you're going to. Hey, talk let's go. About that. So, let's go. No, 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 no. no. Don't but worry he, about but it. he could do that because he's, a, you know, if you're the drill master in San Diego, you know, you can, hey, there I think is, you rate right to talk. Crap no, there is that. absolutely no reason why people should shame other people. Yeah, and that's what Barry likes to do. Right, and right. we're not going to do that in this podcast. I will yeah. not allow it. I will not allow it. Yeah, yeah. So, so go ahead. Paris Island, yeah. my brother right there. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So you know it. First, first Battalion Bravo Company, Platoon 1029. Uh, 8 April 2005 was graduation day. Can't forget it. You know, just can't forget it. I mean, how can you forget it? Um, yeah. Why'd you join? That's a great, that's, that's the million dollar question. I saw this really cool TV commercial. Um, this Marine was slaying it. This dude was slaying a dragon. I was like, that's pretty cool. That goddamn commercial got everybody. Yeah. You're like the fourth uh, uh, guest that we bring in. It's like <laughs> the, 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 the dragon commercial. Okay. Yeah, am, I, that, am I right? I thought it would be the Comstrat, instead of watching our podcast, and instead of watching our podcast, Comstrat, what y'all really need to do, y'all really need to get your ass back to the drawing board and get some dragons on TV. Nobody cares about the lame ass commercials that you guys are bringing out. Bring back the dragons. Listen, do a Game of Thrones type of deal. I don't, I don't really care how you do it. Bring back the commercials with the dragons. It got an entire generation to join the Marine Corps. Yeah, yeah. So you saw the commercial with so the dragon, and, cool. and then what? I was like, man, I wonder what that's like. You know, what is, that, what is that all about? Slaying dragons. What is that all about? Yeah, mm, slaying dragons. Okay. Now my um, my father is a. 20 year Marine Corps vet. He's a, he served from 1980 to 2000. He retired as a Lieutenant Colonel. Wow. Um, I come from a, actually a generation, like uh, four generations of military service. Wow. Um, father, grandfather, great grandfather. So there's, there's an impact there. Um, so that had a lot of influence on my decision. And uh, yeah. Are you originally from yeah. Cali? I was born in Camp Pendleton Naval Hospital and wow. I spent my whole life on the East Coast. Oh, so okay. yeah, mostly Virginia, mostly Virginia Beach. Okay, got gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. Camp Pendleton the Naval Hospital. They don't even, you know, it's still there, but they don't even use it for that anymore. Yeah, they don't. Uh, they, now you got the naval, the hospital up by the front gate. But yeah. um, okay, so, yeah. so you see the commercial. You've got a lot of, you know, generational, you know, military influence in your family. Um, I was kind of BSing about the commercial. I thought it'd be funny, but yeah. I, I, evidently I'm not the first person that did that. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, not original. Okay, so call, call did call your recruiter find you, or did he? Or oh, did I walked in. I was recruiter's dream. Jesus, I, just in. I made up my mind. I had my mind made up. And that's why I had my mind made up. You yeah, so you okay. made the recruiter's job uh, easy. Thank you. Easy. You're saying that word. <laughs> but I'm, yeah, exactly what it is, <laughs> right? But I'm, I'm not the. I'm not your everyday. Guy, you know, you yeah. That so did your dad so. walk in there no, they do. with you to to the recruiting? No, office? he had no idea at all. Really? No. Yeah, at all. Um, and he's a lieutenant colonel. He's a what was he at the time? Yeah, he was retired. He retired in two thousand. I walked into the recruiter's office two thousand four. Oh, Got it. Yeah. Okay. So I was I was living at home. I, you know, I was I graduated high school. I was living at home with my parents. I was working a job, washing dishes at a local restaurant, and going to community college. And uh, after that first semester, I just decided that 
wanted to do something different. Yeah, do something different. And I never really considered military service at all until one night after washing dishes. I just so happened, it was a small kitchen, it was an Italian restaurant, it's in Virginia Beach. Um, one of the guys that was washing dishes, too, like he was the cook, and then there was his, 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 his helper. He was, a, he was a vet, he was a Marine vet from um, Desert Storm. So, you know, we, we'd be working, he'd be you know, telling the story, you know, war story and all that stuff. And, and, and I gotta say this, my, my father's brother, my uncle, my uncle Joe, he served uh, during the Desert Storm era as well as a Marine. So and he enlisted when he was 17. And to me, growing up, this guy was one of the coolest guys. Just in my imagination, like this guy was a really cool guy. You know? Well, he's a Marine. He's a Marine. You know? So you he's never Marine. really thought about any right. other branch of service? No, I, I really didn't. Not at all. Okay. Not at all. Yeah. Just being, yeah, no, no, never. Okay, so never. what did your what did your drone structures, because obviously this is the height yeah. of the Iraq War. Yeah. What, 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 yeah. How was... Was, the interactions was, with the drill instructors. That's a fucking awesome question. Um, intense, to say the least. Because it's Paris Island. Intense to say the least. Because it's Paris Island. Because it's it's, it's what it's what it's designed to be. It's designed to be maximum intensity, right? Volume and intensity. Do you speed volume intensity? Yeah, right? no, <laughs> right. absolutely speed volume intensity. Yeah. I love it. Yeah, yeah. Do you re yeah. what what sticks <laughs> out to you the most? Like when I went to boot camp, for some reason I remember that that late night misty bus ride, uh -huh. and, and she's getting screamed at on the bus. You know yeah. what 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 are some things that stick out to you like right up front? That's an awesome question because there's so many things that stick out. If we're talking about the bus ride, it was a very long bus ride. It was from Virginia all the way down to South Carolina. Oh, so, definitely. yeah. Um, if we're talking about the bus ride, it was kind of like you, you kind of knew something. You know, you know the guy's gonna come on. You know, there's gonna be yelling and stuff, and you know that you know that that's part of the, the part of the deal. Um, so, well, you knew because of your family, probably. Probably your family. Not really. I mean, you know. you know, like there was no YouTube. Um, but there was like, you know, recruiting video, like the videotape that they have in the recruiter's office. There's documentaries here and there and stuff. So, you know that, you know that, and then, you know, there's a full metal jacket. So, you know, there's, you know, it's going to be part of the game. You know, there's going to, you know, you know, it's going to be what it's going to be to, to an extent. Mm -hmm. um, but I kind of had it. I, I, yeah. So the things that stick out to me are the most like if we're talk, taking a step I said would be like receiving is the first step like when you get there you get your issued gear and, and all that stuff and they're kind of moving you through a quick process and you're awake for like a couple days like I think it's like 36 hours you're just awake and you're getting shots and you're getting putting your contraband in the thing and uh the first the first face-to-face -face interaction with the DI was uh was during was during the contraband when work, you know, when you when you sit in the in the classroom, and then there's boxes up front. There's a list of stuff. He's, you know, he's like, you know, any of these things <laughs> you put in the box. So um, I go up, empty my pockets, and I go back to the seat. I realize I still got a lighter in my pocket. Mm -hmm. So I walk back up on my own accord, and I put the lighter back in. And he's like, "What are you doing?" I was like, "Oh, sorry, I just forgot this." And he's like, "And it just got all up in my shit." He's like, "You might want to open up your goddamn." I was like, "I oh, sorry." I was like, mm -hmm. that's when I realized I was like, okay, these guys are on another level. Real. Yeah, yeah. Real. Um, and yeah. that's when and I learned. And I learned. I learned right then and there, man. If you're, if you, if you return that intensity, there's a good chance they're gonna leave you alone. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe, maybe not, but there's a good, there's a good chance if you, if you return that intensity back to them, they might just leave you alone. So that's I kind of, kind of, yeah, kind of learned that right then and there. Yeah. What have you ever heard the term Black Friday? I have. What does that mean? Do you know? I that's the day. It's it, it's it's uh, the day that you get picked up by your drill instructors that are going to train. They're going to be responsible for you for the next three months. That's right. Training, yeah. And everybody knows Black Friday. Yeah, for sure. Do you remember yours? I've heard you ask that on other podcasts, and I don't really remember it specifically. You know, um, there was receiving, and then once you get you, once you get all your gear, you got your sea bag. You we you take a very long 
march, like a run, walk, like a run to your to your barracks, which was uh, right on in Paris Island, First Battalion. Uh, right, right across the the parade. Deck. Right on across parade, deck, and then ours was facing the swamp, facing the, the swamp. swamp. Yeah, and you could see the bridge coming yeah, into yeah. the island. You know, you could see the lights of uh, Beaufort, mm -hmm. South Carolina. Um, now, I, you know, Black Friday specifically, I wish I could. You know, I wish I could tell you exactly exactly those moments. But I could tell you everything. I could tell you everything else. I can tell you everything else. Whatever you, you know, whatever you want to know. I can tell you What's a else. boot camp story? <laughs> a cra do you got a crazy boot camp story that sticks out to you that you're just like, whoa? Well, I got to tell. I got to even even in receiving um, the issue. Go Fasters, which is a Marine Corps term for sneakers. Uh, we had New Balances, and these things. I I guess I have high arches, and um, these didn't accommodate my feet very well. And my ankles swole up like softballs, both of them. Um, so we were, we were, again, we were, we were standing on line. And this is, you know, you have, you have a DI that, that does his receiving thing before you get passed on to your um, training platoon. So he's just kind of there to kind of babysit. I don't, I don't want to call it babysit, but he's just kind of there to be responsible for you until you get to your training platoon while you're going through your receiving stuff and. Uh, we were standing on line for about an hour, so they they knew my shit was kind of jacked up, um, and I was to go to medical in the morning because they were gonna give me some new you know new sneakers or some insoles or some inserts or something, and we were standing there for at, at least an hour, and uh, man, I was it was it was pretty painful, and. I'm I'm trying to hold it together, man. I'm like I'm standing there and uh I couldn't help but man, I just started crying because the pain is like real. Like I'm not trying to be a to hear, you know what I'm yeah. saying? But this is like real pain. Uh, it says, um Sir, this crew request permission to sit on his foot locker, sir. And then he you know, he walks over, he's like, Is it does it hurt? Like, sir, yes, sir. He's like, good. He's like, we're gonna stand here another hour. And I'm like, what the is this? Go what is going on here, man? I'm like, you know. So when we talk about moments that stand out, it was like, okay, this is a different, this is a different ball game. You know, that's that's. But then you could you go to medical? This is, this is yeah. We went to so yeah. I mean. Yeah, you know, went to medical the next morning. Got some new new go fasters. The swelling went down. I continued on the training. Okay, okay. But that was my first interaction of like, okay, this is this is a different, this is different. Now, this what is, was this is not so? Yeah, this is different. This what is, was your first? Uh, what was your uh, your MOS? 0481, which is landing support specialist. So red, red patcher, patcher. Red, red patcher. patcher. That's right. That's right. Red okay, patches. so why do you guys, why do you guys have <laughs> why do you guys have red patches? It's uh, because you guys have okay, yeah, look, have AIDS. You know only what? <laughs> you know, hold on, you said 0481. 0481, yeah. Landing support. Yeah. <laughs> what you say? Is it you? Do you guys wear the red patches because you guys have AIDS? You know, it's a great question because only <laughs> what I found in my experience is it's only a great question. It, it's only highly intelligent people ask that question. And, uh, <laughs> and the answer is no, asshole. Is anything else? Because I mean, oh, he's a no. Because I'm telling you, you, you know, yeah, the answer is no. So, yeah, what is the, the answer? No, my, my friend. My friend. <laughs> what, first of all, for, for everybody who does yeah. not know, yeah. what is yeah. landing support yeah. and why do you have the red patches? Great question as well. So, landing support is under the logistics umbrella, which is the 04 designation. Um, it goes back to World War II when they when beach operations were taking place from ship to shore. The red patch was on the cover or the private private Kevlar or the helmet and the side and the side of the trouser. So. So when the ship was being offloaded to the shore, we were the 
we were responsible for facilitating the movement of gear and personnel. So we were to go to people, you know that that's the guy to go to, hey, where am I going, right? I'm, you know, where am I going? Where am I bringing this st stuff once I come off the ship? So that's kind of, that's where that originated and then they kept it ever since. And a lot since. of people don't know this, but that's, that's if I'm not mistaken, that's the only authorized modification to camis in the Marine Corps to this day. Yeah. I'm not aware of any other, uh, any other utility modification that we have in the Marine Corps. <laughs> Which, by the way, that makes sense. That makes absolute perfect sense. Now, so uh, it, yeah. believe it or not, my I thought we were going to talk about boot camp some more. I was kind of getting... Yeah, my, <laughs> yeah, my, my dad, my I'm dad, just, I'm like, Damn, dude, my dad was also a, a, a land support specialist <laughs> in, when, he, when he was first in the Marine Corps. So that's what he did. And they, believe it or not, they actually had Roosevelt Roads back in the day. And Roosevelt Roads was where there was a detachment of Marine uh, uh, LSB, a land and support battalion over there in Roosevelt Roads in Puerto Rico. Just a little fun fact that nobody asked, but uh, but that's a little fun fact. Okay, so, so wait, wait, did he have AIDS or no? Oh jeez! you, I, I might need to get tested. You're I might ass. need to go get tested, yeah. but uh, I, I hope not that. Do you? I'm gonna actually yeah. go see my dad. Pop, pop. Pop, pop. I'm actually gonna go see my dad. My dad's actually only was here, so I told you I was going to Utah last podcast. Sure. Right? So um, my dad actually started. <laughs> he lives in Virginia Beach, and he actually started like three days ago from Virginia Beach all the way up to California. We're gonna stop in Utah and then he's doing like a full trip where he's staying camping with my brother because this is my brother's last year before he goes to college. So he's doing that. Uh, like KOAs that. or something? I'm sorry? Are they camping at like KOAs or just different? Yeah, they're camping in all national parks. They're visiting all national parks. Well, my favorite's Yosemite. Yeah, yeah, we're going to Zion. That's where we're going. So, oh, that's yeah. insane. Yeah, so that's 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 pretty cool. So going back, going back to uh, to your experience, yeah. um, and and essentially, obviously, trying to uh, to tie it back in with with what you do now. Um, how was your experience doing your first duty station? What was your first duty station? First duty station was North Carolina Camp June, Camp Swampy. Okay. Yeah. How was that for you? That was interesting. Why? What? Come on, man. Why? You know, it's. I mean, there's no place on earth like Camp Lejeune, man. You know, I can think of a few. <laughs> no I can think on. of a few. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah, man. Um, I mean, so we went from so we went from Paris Island three months. Uh, MCT was Camp Geiger, Camp Johnson was MOS school, and then Camp Lejeune. I was there, stationed there for four years. Um, right after the schoolhouse. Uh, went to Landing Support Company, which is in French Creek. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with. I'm not, but I'm very Creek. familiar. Are you? Okay. So they call it Felony Creek. I know it. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Felony Why Creek. would they call wow. it Felony Creek, though? That's weird. Things happen there. Yeah, okay. I guess, I guess. Allegedly. Things happen yeah, there. Allegedly. 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 <laughs> I think we're past the, the, the time that allegedly. we were in the uh, French Creek. Statue of Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, this yeah. happened in 2005, yeah. 2009. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so as soon and as soon as I as soon as I went to the fleet, um, I picked up on the 24th Mu. So 24th Marine Expeditionary Unit. Um, yeah, and it just so hap it just so happens that, that Cur Hurricane Katrina took place. Um, mm -hmm. This was like September 05. So as soon as we chopped to the Mu, we actually that was our first. I don't want to say deployment, but that was our first uh, humanitarian assistance. Mm -hmm. We we uh, we um, took Navy ships down to Biloxi, Mississippi. Did a um, did a ship to shore, and then convoyed from there to New Orleans, uh, which took a long, long time. Landing support uh, is is a lot of times attached to a transportation support company, so we're the A drivers for the. For the for the Motor T guys, for for their Humvees and their uh, the seven ton trucks, and then when deployed, oftentimes uh, uh, A gunners and convoy security things like that. So that's what that's what landing support's function is when we're not doing HSTs, which is helicopter support team, uh, ship to shore like the beach landings mm -hmm. and the um, and your A DAG 
add that, you know, your air arrival, air departure, packs, you know, all that stuff. But we're not doing that. We're with, we're with transportation support. We're a driver. So I'll never forget it. Um, I, it was, a, I mean, just, it seemed like days of driving. Um, from Biloxi, Mississippi, and into the disaster zone, which was New Orleans, and the whole time, the whole time, in every direction, as far as the eye could see, it was complete destruction and decimation. Wow. Yeah, yeah, and then, um, and flooding and, and all that stuff. It was unbelievable. Well, what rank were you when this happened? I think it was the Lance Corporal. Lance wow. Corporal, yeah, 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 Lance Corporal. So that, that was about a month, so we, um, did a lot of humanitarian stuff, passing out MREs and cutting down trees for people. And we also had weapons, you know, so if anything was, you know, I'm just saying, I'm just saying we had weapons too. So we were there for the humanitarian aspect and if, well, you know, well, that's, what, that's, what that's, do you say that? I was, I was, 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 I was in high school, and well, not even probably middle school when this was going on. Yeah. But you, I, I remember Hurricane <clears throat> Katrina from being from Puerto Rico because I think it just grazed Puerto Rico and then it just went straight into uh into the Gulf. Yeah. Um, but the reason why I say that is because was there a lot of like looting, rioting? Well, probably not rioting, but probably a lot of looting, wasn't it? Yeah, I think by the time we got there, that had. For the most part, dissipated. There was a lot of looting. For the most part, dissipated. Yeah. I remember well. I was a drill instructor at the time, but uh, you know, if you guys, if you go back and 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 any, anybody in the audience, you go back and look at it. What was happening was uh, the current administration took a lot of heat because the relief took forever. The relief took forever, and there was looting. There was a lot of looting. Yeah. Um, and uh, people were down there dying, man. Yeah. They were down there dying. I remember they, they were trying to rush people into the Superdome down there in New Orleans. They had nowhere to go. The flooding was crazy. Wow. It was it was a, it was a scary time. Yeah. yeah, it was super. And scary. you were there. I was there. And we were there for about a month. And then uh, packed up and headed back to Camp Lejeune. What did you live on? Are you just out living in the elements, camping? Yeah. No, we were in... Um, we... For a period, we were at different kind of air airfields, like a civilian airport, like small airport, like warehouses, empty warehouses. We set up cots, and yeah, we were kind of living that type of life. We were on a NASA base for a period of time, just kind of in random office spaces, GP tents out in the field. Yeah. Um, get briefed in the morning. This is what we're doing. This is where we're going. Go get do it, it. Go do it. Come back. Do it again the next yeah, day. a lot of people, a lot of people, you know, because there's a lot of training that happens in order for you to go to on these deployments. But yeah. the reason why I I love deployments and it's just life. It's not easy, but it's simple. It's so simple. It's like because you got to think about like literally, there's nobody else. Not like in the rear. Like you got to be asking for twenty different people to do get one thing accomplished. It's like, this is what I need to get done. Like you just said it, go do it. And then just brief me once that's, once that thing's done. Well, and it's a great story because you joined the Marine Corps. You've got generations in your family that served in, in the military. Yeah. Yeah. And here you are thinking, I'm going to be a Marine. This is the height of the Iraq and Afghanistan war. Next right. thing you know, you're, you're in New Orleans doing disaster relief. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Did you ever get to the point to like Iraq and all that stuff? Or sure, no? I sure did. So we did a, you know, the, the we did a what's called a med float, which is uh, six months. It's a six month deployment. So it's it's the way the MU worked or still works possibly is it's a six month work up period where you're training and meeting certain training objectives. Yes. Like checklist, you know, like, um, and then once you once you're qualified for that as a unit, then you deploy for six months and then you return and there's six months downtime, reorganization, restructuring, and then six months training. That's how the kind of the mute works. I mean, I'm preaching to the choir here, obviously. Yeah. No, but it's good that you're saying it because yeah, it's kind of for the camp. It's for the viewer. Yeah, yeah. Know, if they're if you're if they're interested or whatever, you know. Um but that's what it is. So yes, the answer is yes. So we Deployed from um, Naval Station Norfolk, 
on three main ships, which was and the ship that I was on was the LHD called the um, Iwo Jima. Iwo Jima so it was a big Navy ship. Um, took about two weeks to cross the Atlantic Ocean. And from that point, we hit a couple ports. We went to Spain, Italy, five days apiece. Uh, so we had liberty, you know, libo. So we got to enjoy enjoy ourselves for a few days. Um, then we did. Then we did um, some training. When we went to Jordan, we trained there for about two weeks. This was a Jordanian desert, um, so it's kind of like a peacekeeping kind of like um, with their military. You know, we're like yeah. uh, with, with their military. We did the same thing in Djibouti, Africa. For five days, which was um, hottest place I've ever been in my life. Hands down, hands down. And you probably had to take malaria pills before you got there. Well, when I was there, before, before there. they had even had Camp uh, Lemonier there, there was nothing. There was nothing there. Yeah, nothing. Yeah, we dug holes. We dug holes. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> it's so hot that you can. You, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so. Not to get down to too many. I mean, there's so many rabbit holes that you could go down. And that's down. And, and that was crazy yeah. at that even at that time, yeah. Because Djibouti was really really close to where the USS Cole had been bombed. So a lot of people don't remember that, but the USS Cole was obviously a Navy ship, a uh, United States ship. If you didn't know that's what USS stands for, you knuckleheads. And you know the Cole is out there off the coast of Africa, over there by Djibouti. They get bombed. A lot of sailors lost their lives. A lot of people lost their lives. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Not to make you guys feel old, but um, I was in the eighth grade when they were on deployment. Does that make you guys feel old? <laughs> hey, you're as young as you feel. Oh, that's, that's, what that's a good one. That's what somebody told me. That's a good that's one. Somebody that's a good one. Probably your DI. Probably the DI. Probably the DI. DI knows call. everything. Yeah, well, he probably had to call in from home. That's probably where he was at. I'm sure. I guess I got to say, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, that, that okay, so, so, I mean, it, just to, just to finish that up, so, I mean, from, it, it, and then it just so happens we're in that area of conflict, uh, Israel, so this is 06, Israel and Lebanon had a conflict, uh, we, and then, so we turned the ships back around, went there, uh, and started an evacuation, humanitarian assistance to evacuate the American citizens out of, out of Lebanon to get them out of harm's way. So we took them from there to the island of Cyprus, going back and forth, filling up the ship with civilians and, and taking them. To, so there was that. So that happened. Because the intention was to go straight into Kuwait and then convoy into Iraq. But that's not what happened. Things were happening. We were there for, you know, we did that for like two weeks. Um, so and for then, those of you that don't know, Cyprus is actually really beautiful. Amazing. Amazing. It's really like so, but I do want to know this because obviously I was on a navy ship. Yeah. But as a marine, what is your interactions with people, civilians that you bring onto the ship as part of a humanitarian relief mission? Oh, it's a great question because I was actually in Cyprus the whole time, so everybody uh, else was doing that. You were part of like an ADAC problem. Exactly. Exactly. So you I were, can't. You were receiving them, tracking them, and getting them from that point to another point. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So I had to. I had to do that too for when the Afghanistan bombing happened. That's why I got sent to Qatar, uh, because my the um, uh, I was part of the S four, but I was one of the senior members of the S four, and as part of the S four, my my you know RS, which was my boss, was the mobility officer. And but when you're doing something like a NEO, a non combatant evacuation yeah. operation. Yeah. It can be very chaotic, right? Why? Yeah. It People are scared. Yeah. They're hungry. They're yeah. thirsty. Yeah. I need food. My leg hurts. Yeah. Like, where's yeah. a doctor? And now, instead of just, it's not, you're not just sitting there writing names down, checking them off a roster. You got, you're trying to field questions all of a sudden. How old are you? Yeah, exactly. You know, you're exactly. 20 something, exactly. and they're like, what, they don't even speak English, and they're like, "Where's my son? Where's my father? Yeah. Where's my mother?" That, that was that was probably one of the most impacting things for me when I was doing that. Uh, when I was doing that mission, uh, one of the most impacting things for me is one night we started with a uh, empty canvas of a warehouse in Qatar, and by the end of the night we have close twelve hundred refugees that were arriving. And dude, they were scared. They were hungry. They were being ping ponged around from country to country because the countries wouldn't take them. Um, you know, and yeah, dude, it was a struggle. 
because and and you know the part that was a struggle is those people looked up to us and i'm just being straight up honest those people really looked up to us and the way that they were treated by the military really wasn't the right way and it's because you put a bunch of experience unexperienced you know people and the part that really caused a lot of friction it was the um, i don't it's not inhumane because we didn't treat them inhumanely it was the lack of what's the word i'm looking for empathy to what they were going through well because, because you're doing a job because dude i will talk to the like the because i was in charge of like pretty much everything for the time that i was there right uh, because it was so chaotic and it's not like if you look at the paperwork It's gonna be like well Gunny Ramos wasn't in charge of that because he wasn't no man It was because I had to take charge because I was the I was the senior Marine in there The Air Force was the one that was actually in charge, but dude the Air Force the airmen They were they thought that just because they spoke louder to them or they would yell at them that they would all of a sudden understand English and I would have to step in and I'm like bro go away it's like, brother, go away. Just because you do not, uh, you just because you scream at them doesn't mean that they're gonna understand you, and that's the pro that's the problem that you're having. Can I get an interpreter? Anybody? You don't need to be an interpreter. Does anybody here knows English? Can translate? Hey, you come here. Boom. What is he trying to say? Broken English. You know what I'm saying? Like whatever it was that it was trying to that they were trying to say. Okay, great. Listen, we cannot help you out with that right now. There's food coming. There's whatever. You know, it, 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 we had even to solve issues. But issues that didn't even start at the warehouse, we had to solve them. But issues that started in Afghanistan. That's what I'm saying. That though. person owes me money. That's been, that person stole money from me and my family. And I'm like, but that's my point. It's very chaotic <laughs> because when you're in a in a really structured military organization, now all of a sudden you're doing that neo. You're facing all those issues. You you could never have been prepared for that. Yeah, you and can. you're just trying to do the best you can with what you got. You're trying to help them out, like yeah. you said, be empathetic, yeah. not be a jerk, and you do represent something really big and safe and amazing to those people. Yeah, and I don't want to, and I don't want to talk because you know I have, I will never say anything bad about anybody that was there, because the reason why that happens, you got to think about this airman, this marines. They were working around the clock. They had very little sleep. They were stressed out. You know what I'm saying? Like they been, they were doing this for weeks and weeks and weeks. I'm talking about no days off. So you know, like you we I also had to take a step back and not go on full marine mode on these people because I had to understand both sides. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not just the 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 people. It was a bad. It was a really bad situation. And I'm pretty sure all Neos, if not the majority of the Neos, specifically the one that you went through. The only time I used to get crazy it. with some of the interpreters was in Afghanistan. You know, because we'd be dealing with HVIs and all these guys that honestly I hated them. And, you know, you you could you can you trust the interpreters? No. They're locals. Um, they look up to this guy, he's a village elder. And, you know, there's sometimes where you're telling them, like, if you're telling them something that I'm not telling you to say, we will, I will get violent with you. Extremely violent. Okay. Like holding hands violent. Or... Like, uh, we will, I will bring you, you will have a come to Jesus moment. And I know you're Muslim, but you'll see the light, my son. All right. So make sure you're saying what you're being told to say. All right. Yeah. Oh, I would get crazy with these guys, man. I used to get crazy with them. Dude, I'll drop you off right outside the gate and make sure everybody <laughs> knows you've been helping us for the last six months. <laughs> See how Damn, much you like that. Damn, Barry. That's you know crazy. what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I mean? Hey, hey. All of a sudden, people start talking turkey with you. <laughs> you know? Was that the pre-workout talking? Oh, dude. They, I'm telling you, because I had interpreters. They would. You're trying to be nice yeah. to them. You want them to work for you. Be productive. And, uh, you know, we call them Terps in Afghanistan. I had like 12 of them. And most of them were great. And, uh, you know, there was a couple of times guys tried to get crazy with me. And I'm like, you might have grown up in Afghanistan, but I grew up in the Central Valley, dog. And I'm telling you right now, I'll drag you outside the gate by your neck. We can fight right now. I mean, honestly. <laughs> Ain't nothing, no, no one's going to stop us. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So, so Joey. I know what you mean. Yeah, Joey. Um, I know what you mean. How many deployments did you do in your five-year mark? One. That was it. 
You know, that was it. Well, so, technically, too, right? The 24th Mew. So well, you're 20th, not counting the Mew as a deployment. Is that what it is? No, it is, the, the Mew is the deployment. That was the deployment. So, oh, so you went to Katrina then Katrina subsequently? Was, well, Katrina was a humanitarian assistance relief effort. So that wasn't... Yes, the Mew was a, the Mew was tasked to, to do that. The deployment was the six-month planned... Mediterranean. How long were you there at uh, with the Katrina event? It was like a month. About okay, a month. Gotcha, about gotcha. A month. Yeah. Would that be considered about for you? Would you consider that a deployment? No. Yeah. Let us know in the comments. Would you guys consider that a deployment? You probably got for, a, for example, you probably got a humanitarian ribbon for it. Exactly. So you get the yeah, you get the medal, humanitarian medal, which is like the knife hand. Only. Yeah, is it? A, it is a knife hand, and that's always the joke that we make, right? <laughs> right? And then, um, and then we got the then we got the star, you know. So we got two of them because the other one was for the um, for the Lebanon evacuation. I'm sorry, the yeah from the Israel evacuation. Mm. Uh, yeah, so so that took place, and then we landed in Kuwait, and the you know the plan was to again convoy into Iraq, and that just didn't happen. You know, we we staged in Kuwait for about thirty days. I think we convoyed to another another base closer mm -hmm. to Iraq. I think recon yeah. they sent in a recon team. I think they had one casualty out of the whole deployment. You know, a com one combat casualty. I think it was a recon guy. Um, and then the, then the, then we hit the the time uh, the, like the time mark or whatever, and they said, hey, you know, they decided, hey, we're going to pack it up and ship it home. So we washed down all the vehicles, put them back on the ship, uh, went, and then. You know, carried on back to the states. Made a little stop in one of the, I think it was Spain or something, and then uh, carried on back to the states. And that was that. That was that six month deployment. Yeah. So. So are you, what, if I'm yeah. understanding you correctly, out of that six month yeah. deployment, you guys only had one combat casualty. It was the recon marine. I want to say yes. Okay, yeah. well, of course. I want to say. Know, I want to say was, from, from what I remember. Yeah. From yeah, what from, from what you remember. And I gotta say, that, this is a little side note. The um, the Mew commander, his name was Colonel Johnson. He retires a brigadier general. Um, he and my father actually went to, uh, I think it was amphibious warfare school together or something like that, or OCS, something like that. Actually, and they were, they were stationed in, together in Virginia Beach where I grew up. So I, I used to cut his grass, swim in his pool, stuff like that. And it just so happens I got on his mute. It just so happens. It happened. just so happens. Just so happens. Okay. Happened. Yeah. So special just treatment. So special treatment. Well, Did you get special treatment? It depends on what you consider special. Because if you don't to sleep with him in his stateroom. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about Not that. in the same bed. No, no, no. But maybe, maybe, maybe. Unless it's cold. Yo, have you been inside with those staterooms? Yes, I have. Those staterooms are nice. Yeah. Yes, they are. If, if you can, okay, so if you consider special treatment 30 days, you know, 45 days mess duty on the ship. Uh, uh, no, no, that's not. Special I don't consider that special treatment. I don't consider. I consider that like hard punishment, fucking hard labor up in there. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, um, so no exactly. special treatment. No special treatment. No. No absolutely. special treatment. Absolutely zero. Now, um, absolutely zero. are there any other notable moments out of your first enlistment? Because I'm curious. First of, enlistment. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah. I'm curious of knowing like what brought Come you on, back. Man. Come on, man. So, that's, well, why'd you get out? Well, I mean, we can. There's. A, let's get into it. You know what I'm saying. Um, yeah, so we returned from the we returned from that deployment. And this was um, late oh, this December '06. I'll never forget it because I got some money in the bank. We we had our we had some like 15 days leave for Christmas. I think it was. So the first thing I did was um, I, well, you I bought a car. I bought a I bought a 1990 Cadillac DeVille. Um, yeah, put some rims on it. Nice paint job. Real, real classy though. You know what I mean? I mean, we're talking, we're talking '07, so we're talking that era of. It, we, I mean, and then, you got the big body Deville. Yeah, yeah, uh, exactly. I, I mean, and then it was just such a come, you, returning was such a. Well, first of all, I'm just I'm ha I'm I'm happy to be alive and like I I can function all my extreme like I'm I'm alive, man. You know. Um, I just never forget that feeling, like, and I just wanted to be alive, you know. Like I wanted to be alive. Yeah, you were like, you know? "Yolo, you want, you want." I was like, "Yo," I was like, "Man, we're we here, man." You know. Yeah. So um, you bought the Cadillac. Now, is that? Cadillac. This is, was, and mind you, this is when MySpace came. You know, this is when MySpace was first popping. This is when 
Facebook was first popping. YouTube was first popping. So it's like, bam, all now, this stuff. I'm like, is it a yeah. de post deployment tradition for Marines to buy a car? Probably. Probably. That's the whole. Probably. That's the if we if Probably. that's the thing we need that's to get we, we need to get rid of that. We don't do anything with this podcast. That's what we do. No, Marines, if you go on a deployment and you're saving up money for you to save a car, I'm just gonna tell you in plain old English, you are a dumbass. Do not spend your hard earned money into a depreciating asset. Okay, but why do you think uh, why do you think Marines do it? I mean, yes, right. I'm, by definition of what I was saying, yes. But, but it's because Marines don't know any better. That I'm calling you a dumbass because if you go out there, you didn't know any better, so I guess that's kind of ignorance, I guess you can call it. But if you What's do... What's wrong with buying a car, though? I mean, people need cars. It's, depre it's a depreciating asset, man. Like, I'm going to tell you this, man. You're talking about spending like an, ex like, an, like, a, like an exorbitant amount of money that you can't handle. Payment. That's this is why I think that's Marines... Marine, right? yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. I mean, gotcha. But, but this is why I think they gotcha. buy cars when they come back off deployment. Because they want to treat themselves. They, they want to treat them. yourself. That's a part of it, I, I think. I think the distinction is... Not getting yourself into something you can't handle is fine, like financial. Yeah, because yeah. usually most of the time what happens is even if they don't want to buy the car, what they're doing is they are in their, they are in their computer, nowadays obviously, now they are in the computer, we're looking for parts and they're spending $20,000, $15,000 into putting like a suspension and some big ass rims and some whatever. And I'm like, bro, like that's completely unnecessary. Like that to me, I, that, that's, that's completely you. unnecessary. You know, so that that's what I mean, and and I didn't mean to call you a dumbass, but I, what I'm saying because yes, you didn't he, know, it's, it's because like, if you didn't know any better, you didn't know any Puerto better. Rican. He means you that means. are watching, he you that are watching, <laughs> you that are watching. If you now knowingly go out there and do that, then you might be one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So don't spend it if you don't got it. I guess. Yeah, don't spend. I mean, Jesus or do Christ. or do it. Because you only live once. I don't know. You go and spend. Is you go there a put a down payment, fifteen thousand dollars down payment, just to make the car that you want affordable to you. Yeah, that's crazy. That's that's too much. You know what I'm saying? That's what I'm saying. So, what made you get out the first time? Well, see, we use the term. We use the term "get out," and it kind of, to me, it kind of it occurs to me as this. this I don't want to say a negative negative connotation with it, but I I like to look at it as I completed my contract, right? I signed a contract, I completed that contract, and then I discharged. That's what happened, right? I got out. That's like a story about it. Like, yeah, I got like I got out of prison. You know, and that's well, but I what, think that's, that's that's how we tend to phrase it, and that's how we tend to look at it. I don't, I don't, I choose not to look at it like. No, that. you did four years, five years, or right, yeah. So and why did you choose not to reenlist? Okay, so well, the, the GI Bill was a big one, to be honest with you. The post 11 GI Bill. This was. Late 2008 is when I went on terminal. The post 9-11 GI Bill was just getting approved. It was just getting approved. And I, yeah, that gave me the confidence to say, hey, look, this this might be something I can, I can, if anything else, I can fall back on that type of, type Look, of Looking back at it, would you, would it realist it after knowing what you did? No, I wouldn't. Um, and it was, a, it was a, it was a, it was not an easy decision. Um, so we returned, so, just real quick, I mean, we turned back from the deployment. We got 15 minutes, something like that? No, no, we didn't. Okay. We're good. I don't know if it was a time check earlier. No, we didn't. So we returned. We, I mean, it's just so many. We're going down memory lane, man. You know? Uh, it's 07. I'm 20. You know, I'm like 21. You know, I'm, I'm back. I'm a liar. I'm in the caddy. You got the Coop the bill. You got the Snoop the bill. I got the I got the Mac Mobile. You know? Macaroni. I got the Mac Mobile, man. I got my name on the license plate type Stop. stuff. Stop. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm from, you know, I'm from Virginia now. Hey, Virginia, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, man. Like you're over there. You were listening, listening to man. some old school trick daddy. Absolutely. Dude. <laughs> Master P. It was a vibe, man. Birdman. Yeah, it was a vibe, man. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. All that. All that. Three six mafia. Three six. All that. Yeah. <laughs> Up in the club. Dude, they were big. Yeah. Up in the club, yeah, man. I mean it was it was just a, it was just a it was an era, man. It was a it was a special time, you know. Um for me. You know, for me in my experience. So we get so just to finish up. The enlistment we get we get back to 07. Um, I change units to uh, a non deployable unit called Atlantic Support Company FC 412 is the building, it's the quad square buildings. Yeah, so uh, I finished up my enlistment, I think it was the last two years there. Um, 
did the corporal school, you know, I got promoted to corporal. I was a corporal for two and a half years. Um, I did. Did they, when you got promoted, did, did they pin you? No, I got promoted. I actually got promoted on ship. Okay. I got promoted on, you mean you talking about like pins and, yeah. yeah. Oh well, yeah, that's part of it, you know. But motherfucker, if you, if that shit goes in my collarbone, I'm gonna fucking just, yeah. We're gonna have like, a problem. Well, let's make sure that this goes into the fucking meat, the muscle. But did it though? No, yeah, it goes. Into but the you have, but you had, but somebody pinned you when you pe- picked up corporal. Yeah, of course. That's okay, that's, that's, that's always been illegal. What are you talking about? <laughs> no, that's what. <laughs> did you, what you oh, Mary, what are you talking about? What about blood striking? <laughs> you know, I remember. I don't remember blood striking, but I got you know. We got the we did the pin thing. Um, no, no blood stripes. I don't think so. Not that I'm opposed to it. I would have been opposed to it. You know, it's part of the deal. It's cool. You know, I'm cool with that. Um, part of the deal. Yeah, it's kind of, kind of, sort of. Albert, did you pick? Did you? Unless get... I don't respect you, then you ain't, you ain't giving me no fucking blood stripes. That type of thing. Okay, know? so it is a respect like, thing. It's a respect thing, man. Like, yeah. And like, if you ain't, and if there ain't no respect there, don't even be in the line for the gauntlet, right? Yeah, because I'm. Yeah. Because that's, that's what it's called, the gauntlet. Yeah, exactly. Did you walk the gauntlet? <laughs> I did not. <laughs> did you get pinned? I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What now? Did people did do it in your problem. unit, or was it just not a thing, or were you like, "F you guys, I'm not doing it." Um, I think I said "F it, I'm not doing that shit." Yeah. Yeah, it's like because you gotta think, you got and, and at back then I was like, "Well, this doesn't make any fucking sense to me." To me, it wasn't a respect thing. If our respect is not shown through that's how at least that's not how I grew through up. Through physical abuse. Yeah, through physical violence. Like that, that again, that's not how I Do grew up. You think it's because you went to Paris Island. And 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 no, I think it was because the people <laughs> that I respected the most the people that I respected the most, they were the ones that were against it. The people that I personally respected the most. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't like the weak ass NCOs or anything like that. It was the NCOs that can really whoop everyone's ass. Corporal Davidson, I still remember his name. Okay. He was all of, uh, he and he wasn't against hazing. That's why I said like, dude, this guy's just, just this particular thing. Yeah, you know, you know what he used to do. Uh, Corporal, no, I Corporal don't. Davidson, I would love to hear it. What Corporal Davidson used to do is, if he wanted to haze you, this was like when hazing has always been a thing in the military. But this is when it was starting, like social media was starting to sprung up. Like, like he said, this was like early two thousand nine, two thousand ten. So what he, the way that he used to go around it, he, I remember he asked a question. It's like. So, uh, if I do it with them, it's not bad then, right? So, you know what he used to do? He used to get on the ground with you, and he was like, we're going to do some push-ups. We're going to do some, whatever, whatever what, he yeah, used to do. He used to do it, and he was like, hell no. He was like, hell no, you, y'all not doing this. If you're part of my squad, y'all ain't doing this other stupid bullshit. So, for me, uh, as whenever it comes to part of... Well, like, because if I get down with you, now it's just a PT session. Yeah, but... It can, it can still be considered hazing just because even if you're doing it with him, if you are the only one doing it out of your entire platoon, it can still be considered, um, mm. what's it called, uh, uh, like singling somebody out. Because mm-hmm. everyone knows what's going on. You know what I'm saying? People ain't stupid. Yeah, that's why you just say, hey, guys, PT real quick. You know, I just feel like... Well, I mean, all of a be, sudden, it could be for it could be for the old school guys. Guys, if you guys are watching this and you're still in the military, don't try it. I can pro, I can guarantee he's not gonna go your way. He got away with it, and that's why I respect. So him. it did go his way. It, it back then it did, and but like just is, like just like back then when he was in, you know, it was different. You know what I'm saying? Like it's different times. I guarantee you try that shit now. <laughs> those are different times. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. It's all about. The military, is, it, it, I mean, technically, is it's just yeah, it's a different time. Is the That's military um, from. is the military softer? Is it softer? Oh man, I don't know how to answer that question. You what do. You, what do you think? No, I asked you. you should it be? <laughs> should it, is the military woke? Are they softer? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, you haven't been. I don't know. Yeah, you haven't. I mean, I don't know, man. What do you I know my exper- I know my ex- I know what my experience was. What do you believe? Is- what do I believe, man? I mean, okay. Do you believe they're more hardcore than than you and your generation? Two thousand five. That's an easy answer. That's an easy answer. It's a good question because. We have to understand that we've always had weapons. We've always had rifles. Right. We're not trained. You know, we're not even in 05. You're not trained to whoop somebody's ass and, you know, like really like kill them with like your bare hands. Like, yeah, you get your little McMaps McSlap in 
in in boot camp. Like you get that little tan belt, fantastic. But you're not trained to kill, take another man's life with your bare hands. You're trained to point and shoot, right? And use technology to to do that. So, I mean, yeah. the answer is easy. What is the answer? Yes. The military it's, softer. No, no, no. Back then they were they were tougher. It's not softer. Don't confuse the meanings. Yeah. The 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 military I'm back saying, then to, to accomplish that to 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 neutralize that target, we're trained. You're trained the same way today as we were in 2005. Is to use that weapon and and do that, right? Yeah. Not, so yeah. What but, is what is harder? What is softer when it comes down to well, when it comes down to that aspect of of that? You know, that's. Um, that's what I'm asking. I'm just asking for the clarify. As a World War II veteran, who's who's t who's tougher back in his age or 2005? It's it, it's really it's really a non question. The reason for it is because you needed to be tougher in order for you to complete the the mission successfully. Now I think I'm talking about physically tougher. I'm talking about like now you need i think you need to be more mentally tougher because of the situations and the positions that the military puts you in you know what i'm saying because it's not the same thing like you were saying back in world war ii when you need to do hand-in-hand -hand combat you know where you're banging it and all even that then, stuff. i mean even in world war ii yeah like there's more of a chance for it going to hand yeah hand and then break. 2005 but still in 2005 you were being asked to point a weapon at somebody and and essentially the, the further we go you know, it, it just generationally and through time, um, and the more technologically advanced we become, the more comfortable we make ourselves. Dude, but it's I not even think about that. the creature comforts that we have today. The boots are more comfortable today, way more comfortable. Yeah. We have air conditioning. <laughs> It's, it's, I don't think it even goes to that. I don't think it goes to, oh, to the capabilities. I think it goes to the rules of engagement. When we say tough, I mean tough is subjective. You're tough to a degree. You're tough, tough to a degree. Think about this. It's relative. It's think relative. About, it's relative. Think it's about relative. this. It's all relative. I'm talking about toughness. Okay. I'm gonna put you. Got it. You've been so vocal about it. Got it. In a position. Yeah. You're a sniper up on the roof. You are in a Trump rally. Well. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> I'm, here we go. Oh my goodness. Um, you are a. Uh, uh, Secret Service appointment <laughs> sniper up on the roof. Yeah. Veteran 05 Iraqi War veteran. veteran. Sure. You were a recon sniper in mm -hmm. the Marine Corps, and then now you work for, you know, the home, uh, Department of Homeland Security or the Secret Service. No. You see a sniper five minutes prior to Trump from the sniper taking the shot. Yeah. You report it up. Mm -hmm. You say, do not engage. You see the person with a weapon. What do you do? Engage. That's toughness. Because you did the right thing. Because you have, exactly. Because I am being asked to do something that I view as unethical and immoral and really illegal. Right? And, and so that's where the conflict comes in. Okay? And at the end of the day, what do we pay Marines to do? We pay them to make decisions on the battlefield right then. No, we don't. We I'm do. Sorry, we don't. The rules of engagement, read them. That's not what the rules of engagement nowadays says. The rules of engagement, right. you need to have positive identification. Yeah. And not even not even with positive identification, you can engage. The person has to be actively Identified as a threat, which was what happened, which, by the way, you know, the, the director of, of the Secret Service resigned today as we were recording this on July 22nd. They, that's what happened. Are you, right. are you telling me that a person becomes a threat mm -hmm. seconds before he takes a shot? Seconds before he takes a shot, he's already pointing a weapon. Yeah. My point is, by saying we pay him to make decisions right then... In the Marine Corps, in the, in, in the United States military, we operate off something called decentralized leadership. So in other words, you're in charge of whatever element you are. You're making decisions left and right. You don't have to check up with hire for every decision. Yes, I get what you're saying, but my point is you ain't checking with the next higher up for every little thing. You're, you're pulling the trigger and making decisions all the time. 
hundreds of times a day. That's my point. I disagree. No, it's true. Because you might not have heard of Benghazi. You might not have heard of Abigail. These are real life scenarios where this and and here's the thing, right? In theory or practice, whichever one you wanna you wanna do, if Marines or the DOD, Department of Homeland Security, if you know the Secret Service would be training up to those standards, they wouldn't massively have those fuck ups because that is when actual you know mm -hmm. trust and confidence is actually demonstrated. And if they're able to fuck it up, that means that they're not training up to that standard. In my opinion, maybe they have. I mean, clearly, the director or the ex-director of the Secret Service hasn't released that information, you know, what training will, will, has been provided. But that's just the reality of it. Like, mm -hmm. you got to think about, you do not get to that level of incompetence <laughs> by just simply like, oh, that was one mess up that we've had. Mm -hmm. uh, that was an isolated incident. I do not believe that. Okay. Do not believe so that at you all. Do, but at the end of the day, you do think that the military is not as tough today. Yeah, they're not. Okay. They're not being trained to be as tough. Got it. That's just that's just me. So the conditions, I mean, like with coast, like what you mentioned, the conditions are maybe the conditions are maybe less tough, right? Because like you said, it goes back to the boots. The boots are more comfortable, but they should be more comfortable. All right. Yeah, they should. So the condition is maybe less tough until it's not until you those comfortable boots are put in that position and you got to go through that. The environments we have no control over. Because yeah. you may be in a Katrina environment. Yeah. Well, what the heck? You know, maybe it was hot. Maybe it was rainy. Maybe it was both. Maybe whatever it was. Being in the desert. Being in the jungle. You, we can't control that. We can't control that. You're not going to have AC out there when you're operating in those environments. You're not. Um, so, you know, yeah, I think we do our best to, uh, and you know, when I was in the infantry, they used to say it all the time. You have to make your Marines live Spartan. They said that all the time. And so, you know, we want quality of living to be better, but there is a part of the Marine Corps and you guys may not like this, but you know, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, if you guys have ever heard these, this terminology, they want those grunts out there in those combat arms, Marines to be uncomfortable to a very high degree. You know, because why? Because they're going to be harder because they went through something real hard. They're going to be tougher. They're going to be more resilient. That's how you build resilience. Uh, you know, I, I, th I think you're I think you're right. Go ahead. Because because that's what I'm saying. Like, like, you know, it always kind of rubbed me the wrong way because people do it all the time. They talk about the previous generation. Yes. Yeah. It, it's like. I feel like there's a particularly like in the, in the Marine Corps, there's always a compensation. If there's more comfortable boots, then there's another way that's, that the- Yeah, you know I, I, mean? I get there, what you're always, saying. A compensation. I like the way Troy Black said it. The uh, He is the fifth senior enlisted advisor to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. There's only been five of them and two of them have been Marines. And he's one of them. He was the previous sergeant in the Marine Corps, as you guys know, but he, I liked how he said it, every generation has always said that the generations after them were not as tough. Exactly. And back, yet, in, back in mind, like I hate that. And yet every generation has showed up and proved themselves. I have more faith in this generation than I've had in all previous generations. And that's going to be super controversial. You know, and I, I agree I with Troy, though. And it's like, we, we do. We say that because somehow we give ourselves the right or the some type of high ground and say we were tougher, we were harder. And at the end of the day, it's like... Every generation shows up and they make stuff happen, and they're still doing it. Yeah. They really are. My little military. So we believe in you guys. Yeah, military or not, you know, just in general, yeah. like in the work, and like I think that's a pretty valid statement. You know, yeah. Facts. Facts. Okay, Facts. so so you did your deployment. Yeah. You did not reenlist. There was a lot that kind of went into yeah, that. I picked up. Uh, I picked up meritorious sergeant prior to prior to that. In, uh, the end of that enlistment, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, man. It, it was not an easy decision. It was not an easy decision because... Uh, so hold on. You picked up decision. Corporal, yeah. then you picked up Meritorious Sergeant, and you still decided to get out. What I was still it? still did, yeah. What was that like being a Meritorious Sergeant? What? It was, felt like... Uh, 
a, a significant accomplishment. You know, it really did. It, yeah, it really did. It felt like a very significant accomplishment at what, the time. What made yeah. so? What yeah, did you do once you transitioned that first time? Um, let's see. So yeah, I, I discharged in EAS late '08. I went back to Virginia Beach. Yeah, I went back to Virginia Beach and I ended up going to, I ended up utilizing the GI Bill. So I went to Norfolk State University, which is in Norfolk, it's in Hampton Roads, which is Southeastern Virginia. Um, it's HBCU. Um, Cause I wanted to be in radio and TV. So I became a part of that university. I became a part of the radio station. I became an on-air announcer. Um, cool. So I hosted my own radio show. I had my own DJ and all that. Oh, so that was freaking awesome and i was living can, can you give us and, a little radio and, like oh yeah sure this is joe mack on hot 91 oh how about that exactly air horns all day <laughs> wild times yo awesome. like loved it loved it so i really so i i was very you know, i feel like i was very fortunate man because i got to utilize the gi bill right when that like, post 9 11 right when it came out because prior to that it was the montgomery which wasn't nothing you know, the post 9-11 gave you full tuition and a monthly stipend to live off of. So I was renting an apartment down at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront and I'm going to and I'm going to school and I'm on a radio in Norfolk at Norfolk, downtown Norfolk. So I'm like having a ball, man. I was having, I was having, both. I was having a ball. Yeah, I was so, having a ball. So what made ball. you want to go back in? That's a fantastic question. It was an opportunity. I, I signed it. So I signed an eight year contract when I was 18, four years active, four years inactive, ready reserve, which means technically in those second four years, you have to be within standards in case you're recalled and they need, they need you. Mm -hmm. Right. So, and what I didn't know was I learned in that time that you can reenlist in the inactive ready reserve. Like that's an option. You could do that and stay Stay, stay in there. Um, there was an opportunity. There was an opportunity. There was an opportunity to um, to come back active and be non-deployable, which is called the active reserve component. Uh, and the more I learned about it, I learned about an opportunity that, and I wanted to be West Coast. So um, there was an opportunity to be in San Diego. So I took it. Nice. So I took it. Yeah. So I did. Uh, I did a year on Miramar. Active reserve, and I, and and I yeah, so and I became a 0431. I, mean, oh, I had to, I had to re I had to re reclass like or whatever. Did, I had to retrain did, MOS. So I had to go back to Camp John. I went back to Camp Johnson for oh, like. Did you retain your rank as a sergeant? I did, and the day the rank started over from day one. So yes, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. What was that like? You've been out of the Marine Corps for several years. You show up, yeah, and you're like, I'm yeah. a sergeant. That was different. That was different for me um it was just different man and yeah it was different man it was good bad hard easy crazy weird all the above <laughs> all the above what were you all doing what were you doing when you fell out I, I, I felt like i changed you know, I, I had changed so much in those four or five years that i was you know at, you know that i was that i was a not a civilian but a veteran you know during that time, during that time in college, and I, when I came back, it just wasn't. Yeah, it wasn't the same for me. Yeah, it wasn't the same for me. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it wasn't the same for me. So you decided to move on after that. Yeah, year. yeah, yeah. Now, what yeah. got you started with uh, the VFW? Uh, Great question. So VFW is, mind you. So I discharged that second time in 2014, and at the time, I really didn't want really want to be associated with the military and um or be like known as a veteran or whatever and, like all these things but, you know we're 10 years later from that you know we're 2024 and last year I, I needed some assistance you know i needed some assistance some financial assistance um for some legal fees so i turned to the you know i just inquired the vfw the vfw they had a post they have a post in pacific beach you know i've lived in pv for 10 years pacific beach california it's a beautiful place to be um yeah so i inquired there and they they helped me out you know they helped me out and um so i decided to start volunteering there 
and just start helping out, helping out vets with whatever they need to help with, you know, getting their benefits mostly. Questions about getting their benefits. I'm a person who's maximized his benefits, right? So when you're, when you contact me, you're talking to a person who's maximized his VA benefits, you know, education benefits, you know, um, disability claim, except the only thing I haven't done is the VA home loan. So we got to talk about that. Oh, we sure do. Um, Cause I'm renting a studio apartment, a PV for two grand a month, you know, so mm. we gotta, we gotta switch that up at some point. Right. Um, yeah, there's an opportunity to become what's known as the post service officer, which is, it's an, uh, to, and it's appointed, it's an appointed position. So that's what I am. I'm the post service officer for the VFW Pacific beach. What does that mean? It means when somebody walks into the, to the post, or they call up and they're asking for some type of assistance, they give them my number and then they contact me. Then I verify them, make sure they, that they are who they say they are, you know, DD-214, ID, stuff like that. Okay, what's going on? What do you need help with? Okay, let's see let's see if we can get you in the right direction, that type of thing, you know? So it's a, yeah. yeah. So what and, it and, and how it's, a, it's a volunteer position, by the way. How soon can, how soon can service members reach out to you? Like, let's say, for example, um, uh, uh, can a service members reach out to you in terminal? Uh, yeah, sure. I mean, yeah, I mean, ideally reach out, reach out to your BFW or your American Legion post that's in your city near you. Right. Oh, yeah, okay. Okay, okay. So you, you that's have the, the PV and which areas does PV uh, service? Anybody in San Diego, really, I guess. Okay. You know, anybody that's in the area. Okay. Got anybody you. that's in any vet that's in the area of San Diego. Is it just Marines? Say. No, it's. The, the, so there's a couple veteran organizations, you know, American Legion, you could be a vet and it doesn't matter. You can join the American Legion. You could be, if you're, if you've served in a campaign in a time of war, then the VFW is an opportunity for you to join. And it's, it's just, what it is, it's a community of vets that it's a network, you know, it's a network. Got you. Um, and, you know, people that are in your community that, that, is, that, that, are, that are veterans of yeah. foreign wars, essentially. Yeah. In our post, there's a there's a bar. It's got the cheapest drinks and PV if that's your thing. It's got a little meeting hall type thing. They do cookouts. They do burgers and dogs on on Independence Day, and uh, they cut the cake on Veterans Day. Things like that. You, know, you have me like cheapest that. drinks and PV. I will be honest with you. There you go. That's where you have yeah. me at. Cheapest cheapest drinks and PV. That's it. Now. Um, the, the, the questions, um, that I have for you, right, is like, so like essentially a veteran, a veteran that has been part of any campaign can reach out to you, uh, uh, that are, and that's in, um, uh, is there like a, like a national oh, I'm website? A, I'm a, I'm a, like, just to keep it real simple, I'm, I'm a veteran that has decided to volunteer some time to help other vets. If, if you're looking for like information on that, utilize the power of the internet, Google, VFW American Legion, find one near you. Go check it out. That's that's my thing. That's my whole thing. You know. Got you. Do you guys, I, I get, I, regardless, I get a couple calls a week. Just hey, you know, tank. You know, can, can you hook me up? You know, like a tank of gas. Like sometime, you know, my RV broke down. Um, hey, I'm looking to upgrade my discharge from 15 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and you help guys with that stuff. Yeah, we we just I, we just figure it out on the fly. I'm like, hey, that's a great question. Let's try to figure it out. You know. So what about a guy like me? You know, retired sergeant major. If I called up to the VFW, what would you be like? Oh my gosh, you're not. You mean you're telling me you're not doing this, this, and this? No, I'm not that guy. I'm just oh, like, hey, it. what are you dealing with? You know, what's yeah. What's what's important to you? What are you dealing? What am with? I dealing with? Well, I'm I'm, I'm extremely handsome. Um, I'm, I'm amazing. What you know what I mean? I'm an angel. Uh, you know. So. Hey, listen, old ladies in Instagram and Facebook think different. <laughs> you know. That's obvious. Yeah. That's obvious. Yeah. And the cheapest drinks. And the cheapest drinks. Yeah. So um, a lot of times, a lot of times it has to do with disability claims. And, got it. And a lot of times I'll refer them to the VSO, who's up. This is their job. They're paid to do this and help you file your claim and possibly appeal your claim after the decision has been made. Somebody XYZ. needs help with the VA home loan. Who do you send them to? Albert Ramos. Ooh, boy. Oh, hey, this wasn't day. rehearsed, by the way. Oh, day, every day. Yeah, this yeah, wasn't yeah, rehearsed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you need rehearsed. personal training. <laughs> there we go. That's so, do you guys have any events That's or anything like that? Do you guys do events? All the time. All the time. Like I said, like, you know, we just When's the next one coming up? And yeah, I know I'm getting you on the spot here. Oh, man. We'll have to see. But the post is always Do you do a Marine Corps birthday ball? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, they, they 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 have like a hall. They have the ability to host. 
Yeah, because I remember cool. being on I and I in Sacramento, and they used to do little things. They would have these potlucks. They have card games, bingo, little these little fundraiser type exactly. things, dude. But it was exactly. cool, man. Like it was, it was honestly cool, and, and the old timers love it because you know you get some youngsters in there, and you guys can trade sea stories. I'm really, I'm really looking That's forward a- to learning more about that. And the reason for it is because I'm uh, oh, Marine Corps ball season is is going up, and I already had um, two first sergeants. Uh, that I'm close with reach out to me and be like, hey man, like, can you help us out? Be like, we've been in ITX, you know, we've been training. You know what we need to do, dude? We need to set up a podcast episode at least one ball. At what? At least one ball? At least one ball. Oh yeah. Set so, so set it all up. Set it. Set it. Let us know. Uh, we can. We want to set up a podcast episode. This just on the fly because that's just how we do it. Uh, listen, we're gonna set up. Uh, we're gonna set up shop in any. Uh, uh, um, Marine Corps ball this year. We want to ensure that we that we're there. Basically, are you willing to try to Vegas? I'm not. It don't matter to me, dog. We hey, we work from you know Listen, forever. Dog. But I, I stay at the Bellagio. I don't know about you. Hey, dog, did they take? Do they take uh, green money? They take green money. I tell you, I'll hook them up right here, dude. I'll tell you, I'm you <laughs> okay. Motor scooter, come on over here, dude. This card will get you anywhere. We, so um Joey, I really wanna right. I really wanna thank you for coming over here, sharing yeah, your sure. sharing your stories, brother. Yeah. Um, not only that, letting us know about the VFW until yeah. you reached out to me, man. Yeah. Uh, uh you I didn't know what the VFW was. I had to actually research research it up, like I told you before the podcast, because I didn't know what it was. And then now it's an organization that I would definitely get involved with. I would definitely love to do a collaboration with the VFW, not for me or for my business, cool. but for the Marines that are, or, you know, the service members that are going to be watching this podcast yeah. uh, and they need help with their funds. Well, dude, yeah. I remember being on I and I in Sacramento and that's really where I fell in love with the VFW because those guys are plugged into the community. So can they necessarily help you with employment? Is that that's not their official role but these guys are new people is that the case with every vfw maybe not but like like joey said dude go in there talk to folks man hey I'm, I'm in a pinch this is my situation dude i bet you they know a guy and i bet you they'll pour you a cold glass of beer while you talk about it you never yeah. know who knows who and who can do what that's you right. You don't know what you don't know. Good man. So, yeah, let's set up. Let's set up. Let's set up a time for for uh, for us to go down there. Um and and Easy. shoot just shoot the shit. I love Dude, could you do. imagine? You got you got old timers down there. Oh yeah. Who's a couple of anybody that you? Yeah, I love the commander. His name is Mike Hill. Man, he's a you know Vietnam era vet, army pilot. Um, just a he's army army? solid dude yeah no we don't talk to him (laughs) i'm kidding i'm sorry i apologize i'm not professional i mean you know i try not to hold that against him but we do what we do yeah you know yeah you know these um, guys got some cool stories down there yeah dude we got to go interview some of these guys yeah we do well we do a we do a meeting every month like a vfw meeting it's the second thursday of the month i'll send you an invitation this is one down yeah it's i mean it's it's, this it's is what easy. we want. We yeah. this is what we want. We want to set something up. We want to do some interviews down there, yeah. and yeah. these guys bring in some of their paraphernalia, whether it's a, a uniform item, yeah. medals that maybe they're they're willing to share. And we'll interview them, and yeah. we will we'll interview we'll them the right then there. Yeah, yeah. We'll interview, yeah. Okay. Because I we, we got to get those stories, man. Because some uh, of those people they're, they're going to be gone, gone bro. Are amazing, exactly. and they're exactly. going to be gone, and we want to make sure that we get their real stories. Exactly. Uh, out there, man. So, exactly. dude, where can people reach out to you uh, for the VFW related stuff? Well, I mean, you can do that if you want to. Um, I'm on IG at Joey McAvoy. That's M A C A V O Y, Joey McAvoy. So, yeah. Awesome. Bear, where can people reach out to you at? You guys know where to find me at Instagram, at Bull5277, TikTok, at Bull52772, YouTube. The A to B podcast. That's where you're watching this episode, okay? On Instagram and TikTok. This podcast and many other podcasts is linked in my bio. Click the link, follow it to YouTube, subscribe, share, comment. This podcast is for you. The same for me and Alvin. We're not getting paid doing this, okay? This is, we love doing this because this is about, you know, military taking care of military, veterans taking care of veterans, people taking care of people, all right? Click the link in my bio, schedule a call. The call is free and the change is going to last you a lifetime. And guys, you guys know where to guys reach out to me, okay? Ramos of the Score Capital, TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. Go ahead, 
go to the link in my bio, schedule a consultation, just like my friend Joey here is going to do, because we, what we do is, and what I'm going to do with Joey is, I'm not going to try to sell him a home. I'm going to show him a roadmap on how he can utilize his VA entitlements in order for him to be successful. That's exactly what I want to do with you again. And this is what keeps our podcast running, the support from our audience and you guys. So make sure you guys go to the link in my bio. Check it out. You don't have to check an appointment, but please just like, follow, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Boop. Nice. Dude, that, that, we got to do that. Yeah, we definitely got to do that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Dude, oh, easy, like, too yeah. Easy. Yeah, so that was yeah. We definitely got to talk talk to the group. Like Dude, the next event. Yeah. yeah, the next event. Let me know. Send us a calendar invite, and then we can take all this stuff. I really like the idea about doing a podcast episode on a Marine Corps ball. Oh, dude, that's, that's that would that would show that would, that would do. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm gonna talk to JV. I'm gonna talk to JV because me and him are talking about doing. More. And by the way, there's some legit veterans ones up in Long Beach too, dude. So really? yeah, yeah they, we can they, do. They, Dude, that's like, that's like legit. They're not that's, little. These are not little. They're like that's like party seats for us. You know what I'm saying, yeah. That's... I was gonna say that's like if there is a time where we can blow this thing up on YouTube, it's ball season. Yeah, exactly. It's VFW. Oh, season. I'm gonna stop this. Okay.